Hey there, and welcome back to RimWorld. My name is Pete, and today we complete episode 24 of our RimWorld Ice Sheet Survival Series. Now, I am feeling a bit under the weather today, so the episode is unfortunately going to be a bit shorter than usual, but I hope you understand and are still able to enjoy the video. Now, in the last episode, we finally got our hydroponics going, we brought in our very first rice harvest, and combined with the meat of an angry pack of works, we were able to cook up a nice amount of pemmican for the huskies. As we start things off today, the rice is once again ready to be harvested, so Cambia goes to work immediately. A full night of rest, and then the remaining harvest is brought in on the next morning, and once all seven of the hydroponics basins are emptied, Cambia also begins sowing out new rice plants. Once everything is taken care of, Cambia then returns to the research bench. Our current research project is the ship computer core, the first of five research projects needed to build a spaceship, and hopefully we will be able to finish that project in today's episode. Now another night has passed by, and before we continue with research on the next morning, we are first improving our defenses. Especially the centipedes we have faced in the past had no troubles making it into the base, so with the materials we have, we are going to extend our trapped corridor a bit. Now for the traps here, we are switching over to Plasteel Deadfall traps instead of the default steel version, simply because we have plenty of Plasteel available, and also because the Plasteel traps have higher hit points and a slightly higher damage output. Now it's not much compared to the steel version, 72 damage instead of 60, but that is still a 20% increase, and the reusability of the traps is also a huge factor. We simply need to place them once and only have to rearm them once they're triggered, so using Plasteel here is definitely a long-term investment, hopefully one that will pay off down the line. The door here, by the way, is also made from Plasteel, that once again gives it an increased amount of hit points compared to the steel version, and that makes it a bit harder to break through. Don't worry though, we're not going to switch over to Plasteel entirely. In the long run, that is going to cost us, I think. But here and there, especially for the defenses, it makes sense. And if we have Plasteel to spare after a big mechanoid raid, for example, then I think those are good moments to use some. With the defensive upgrade finished for now, Cambia is once again getting some rest here, but in the early morning hours, we are potentially in deep trouble. This right here is the first infestation we experience in this playthrough. It was admittedly only a matter of time. Thanks to the cold temperatures out here, they can only appear in the summer, however, which is why I played it a bit risky. Now though, we have bugs in our base. The infestation is thankfully a small one, but of course we want to take care of it immediately. Now, a few things to pay attention to here. Number one, it is an absolute priority to make sure that Cambia does not get hit. The insectoids have sharp claws and can do a lot of damage in melee combat, and they can easily cut off fingers and other limbs or leave permanent scars. As you can see, once the bugs are being attacked, they will also start destroying stuff in the vicinity. However, despite the storage room being full of items, they will opt for the structures inside of the room instead, and those are luckily only a few conduits and the orbital trade beacon. So even if they manage to do some damage, that is nothing we can't replace. Now initially, the insectoids here are not hostile, however, they will attack to defend their hive within a certain radius. That already is reason enough to attack them first, because of course we want to continue to use the storage room. Another reason to deal with the infestation immediately is the insectoid hive. If left alone, that hive will continuously spawn new insects, which could then at some point completely overwhelm your base. The hive can of course be destroyed, but for that it makes sense to kill the insects first. As we can now see here, one of the conduits has been destroyed, and with that the power supply into the base has been cut off. Admittedly, that sounds a bit more dramatic than it is, as we don't really have any electrical equipment that we desperately need at the moment. Much worse is the fact that, despite what I said earlier, Cambia did in fact manage to get hit. Now, we got extremely lucky here that only the small Spellopede was able to land the hit, so Cambia only suffered a cracked rib and a cut in his torso. All in all, though, those injuries won't affect him all that much. Still, of course, we want to get them patched up immediately. Unfortunately, though, we cannot use any medicine for that, because the medicine is in the storage room. I think, though, for these two minor injuries, a healing attempt without medicine will do just fine. Right the second before he was injured though, Cambia was able to down the Mega Spider, so that already took the more dangerous enemy out of the fight, and now we only have to deal with one that is much smaller and much less dangerous. Still, we want to keep our distance of course and not risk any further injuries. We got lucky once with the first hit, no need to test our luck twice. 
After a few attempts of bashing in the door, the Spellopede then loses interest, and that is the moment that Cambia uses to strike. His volley from the charge rifle kills the enemy, and with that, the infestation is almost taken care of. I say almost because there is of course still the hive, and the mega spider here near the entrance is also not dead yet. That is changed, however, with a few quick punches, after which we can then focus on taking down the hive. The hive here, by the way, has also produced some insect jelly. That is a small positive side effect of an infestation, as insect jelly is a surprisingly popular food in RimWorld. Insect meat, on the other hand, should only be used as a last resort, and with the amount of dead works we still have in our storage room, I don't think we need to butcher up the insectoids anytime soon. And here we are, our very first infestation is officially taken care of. I admit that could have gone a lot worse. Since it is the end of summer now, I don't think we're going to install any additional security measures. Still, for the next year, we should probably prepare something. The easiest way to avoid infestations below the mountain is really just to cool the base down to a certain level. I think the current minimum temperature is minus 17 degrees Celsius. In rooms with temperatures below that value, infestations will not spawn. That, by the way, is also the reason we put the hydroponics farm outside of the mountain, because we constantly need to keep that room warm. A few moments later then, the conduits are repaired and the base has power again. Cambia is also hauling the insect corpses into the storage room, and while he does, his injuries have already fully healed again, so not using medicine this time was not that big of a problem. Now, unfortunately, in the fight, Cambia's button-down shirt got a bit battered. Its hit points are currently below the half of its maximum hit points, which makes it tattered apparel and causes the appropriate mood debuff. And even though the penalty to Cambia's mood here is only a meager minus 3, we can get rid of those minus 3 fairly easily, so let's do exactly that. We are now crafting the exact same shirt again, a button-down shirt made from human leather. The human leather clothing will also have a positive effect on Cambia's mood, and wearing a freshly crafted shirt will remove the negative one as well. Six hours later then, the shirt is finished. Unfortunately, it is only of poor quality. The one that Cambia was wearing up until this point was of shoddy quality, however, which is even worse, so the new shirt here is an upgrade in every way imaginable. On the next morning then, we spend a bit of time cleaning up the base. The infestation has left a bit of a mess, the other rooms are also not exactly in pristine condition, and because those dirty surroundings will cause Cambia further mood debuffs, we'll take care of them now while we have the time to spare. In the middle of the cleanup process, then the breakdown of a hydroponics basin, and this right here is actually the perfect example to show you how problematic such a breakdown can be. Now, Cambia is heading out to start the repairs immediately. Still, the rice inside of the basin is deteriorating at an alarming rate, which, by the way, would also happen if the power connection of the basin was interrupted. Now, Cambia does manage to repair the basin in time here, but just imagine all seven basins were hooked up to a conduit, and that conduit would break while Cambia is on the other side of the ice sheet. That would be more or less a guaranteed loss of an entire harvest, which is another reason why hydroponics can be a bit unreliable at times. This is also another reason why I prefer to plant rice in hydroponics. Should a rice harvest get lost, you can at least regrow it fairly quickly. For now, it is once again time to harvest, and once that is done, all seven basins will be replanted. However, Cambia doesn't quite manage to finish the job, but honestly, that is fine with me at this point. We already have a good amount of rice in storage, the next harvest will add to that, and it does not necessarily have to be a full one to keep the colony fat for a while. At night then, the first escape pod of the episode crashes down, and as usual, we'll have a look at the person inside and see whether or not they're suitable to join the colony. Now, Long here has the fast walker trait, which is positive. However, she is also abrasive and jealous, which could cause problems. Most importantly though, she is incapable of violence, and that is sadly a deal breaker. She also has a permanent scar on her right leg, which will not only cause her constant pain, but also reduces her movement speed and pretty much neutralizes the fast walker trait. All in all, as you can hear, I'm not convinced, so once again, we'll let the ice sheet do its thing and then return to collect the corpse in a few hours. The next morning starts with research for Cambia, and the computer core project progresses nicely, that is until Cambia has to head out on the ice sheet to collect Long's corpse. The huskies are unfortunately not able to do that, but they can carry something else. Conveniently enough, Long's corpse landed right to the remains of a small silver meteorite, and while we're here, we might as well finish mining that. The huskies will now come and pick up the silver, while Cambia can haul the corpse back to the base.
Another night has passed by. We have, by the way, made it into autumn on the ice sheet. So summer is over, and that means temperatures will now drop again. Cambia's cannibal meal reserves are also getting low, which is why we start this day off with a bit of butchering. The human meat will then immediately be turned into simple meals. The amount of meat we have is enough to produce seven of those. The cooking process doesn't take long, and around noon the meals wander into the storage room. The remainder of the day is then spent with research, until in the evening hours we get the already familiar message, our female husky Ruby is pregnant once again. And, uh, well, you probably already know what that means, so I'll just leave it at that and skip ahead to the next morning. And that morning sees a small group of visitors arrive on the ice sheet. However, they don't have anything to trade, and I also don't want to anger the faction by killing them, so we'll just let them pass by. Speaking of passing by, just a few hours later we have a trade ship arrive in orbit, and that one could be a bit more useful, so let's see if they have anything interesting to offer. Well, not really, to be honest. We can also see here the price we would currently get for the huskies. At 126 silver apiece, that is really not a lot. And for younger huskies, that would be even less. So as cruel as it is, the slaughtering strategy we've gone with so far might be the best choice. In terms of goods here, the trader only sells drugs, bionic body parts, and a few other things that we really don't have a use for at the moment. So we'll just leave them be and send them on their way. After a few hours of research, then the rice is once again ready to be harvested, so we will have Cambia get on that while the huskies can take care of hauling. With this harvest brought in, we will also take a quick break from farming. I already mentioned this, we have enough rice at the moment. Harvesting and sowing out new plants takes a while, and as long as we don't need the rice, I think that time could be better spent doing other things. So to save a bit of energy, we'll also shut down the heater and the sun lamp, although to be honest, we produce more than enough power and could just leave them on. The hydroponics basins now get forbidden, that way Cambia will not interact with them, and as you can see, we now have about 350 units of rice in storage, and that should be enough to serve us for a few days, during which we can focus exclusively on research. In the early morning hours of the next day, then we once again have cargo pods crashing down, and this right here, one of the best drops you can get out on the ice sheet, 104 units of fresh meat, our huskies will be more than happy to haul those back into the base, while Cambia spends the day at the research bench. The cargo drop then actually remains the only thing worth mentioning on this day. In the evening, we can see the research project has made nice progress, so if we can maybe get another day or two of uninterrupted research, we should have the first of five shipbuilding research projects completed soon. It is now the next morning, and once again we start things off with things falling down on the ice sheet. However, this time it's only a chunk of spacecraft, but it has landed very close to a small silver deposit, so we might do a bit of disassembling and mining down the line. Before Cambia once again goes into a research frenzy, we have to start cooking though. The Husky's pemmican reserves are down to only 90 units. That should still last them for a few days, but I don't want to risk anything here. It could always happen that Cambia is occupied fighting off raiders while the supplies drop to zero, and at that point the Huskies would of course start eating the meat and rice raw, which is a bit of a waste of resources. From 9 o'clock in the morning until 5 in the late afternoon, Cambia spends time at the stove. The result? An additional 240 units of pemmican. In the evening then, Cambia also takes the last cannibal meal for himself. That means he now only has that one left in his inventory, plus one normal simple meal that is also in the storage room, so we will very likely need to start cooking again tomorrow. At night then, a peace talks opportunity presents itself, but we are going to ignore that for the moment. Not only are Cambia's social skills questionable at best, but looking at the faction overview, the faction that offers us peace here is actually a tribe, and I would actually like to have at least one tribe remain hostile with us. The reason for that is really simple. Tribal raids are, at least in my opinion, a bit easier to defend against compared to pirate raids. The enemies are mostly not that heavily armored, and making peace with the only tribe that could attack us at the moment, that would turn every raid into a pirate or a mechanoid raid, which might not necessarily be what we want. As I said then, for Cambia, the next day once again begins with cooking. In the absence of human meat, we are making a few simple meals out of rice for him. Those will of course not provide him with the positive cooked cannibalism moodlet, but at the moment his mood should be able to take that small hit. 
I realized I could have also made some pemmican for Cambia as well here. In the end though, since we're only talking about feeding one single colonist, I don't think it makes much of a difference. The meals are quickly prepared and Cambia now once again has a long day of research ahead of him, a day that also once again conveniently enough passes by without any major incidents. So we return to the research bench once more on the next morning. In the early afternoon though, the research project is finally completed. Cambia has successfully researched the ship computer core. And with that, our escape from this planet is getting one step closer. As you can see here though, we still have a long way to go. Not only do we need to complete four more research projects to build the ship, but we also still need to unlock two of those, for which additional research is necessary. Now we will not jump into the next project immediately, instead we can now start the hydroponics again. Yes, we still have quite a bit of rice left over, but just like with the pemmican I don't want to run too low in case we have a crisis. Just before Cambia can start sowing, a wind turbine breaks down, but thankfully the problem is quickly fixed. Since temperatures out on the ice sheet are getting lower and lower, we will also turn up the heater by a few degrees, just to make sure our hydroponics farm stays warm enough. On the next morning then, we have already made it halfway through autumn, and I mentioned this earlier, we are going to do a bit of disassembling and mining today. Now, we are of course not in desperate need for steel, silver or components, but then again, since all of those are fairly important resources, I don't think we have to get to a point where we are. So let us deconstruct the ship chunk for steel and components here, and we can also mine the silver deposit for an additional 140 units of silver. This now also gives our huskies something to do as they can help with the hauling, while we are already nearing the end of today's episode. However, I want to wrap things up today with a small question. As you might remember from one of the earlier episodes, right next to the base here we still have an undiscovered ancient danger. Now ancient dangers could hold anything for us in store, from insectoids to mechanoids to cryogenically frozen pirates, so opening them up is always a bit risky, but depending on who or what we find they could also be very rewarding. It is not uncommon to find some valuables inside of an ancient danger, so opening up this one might also be worth it. And that is my question to you as we end this episode. Would you like us to open that ancient danger in one of the next episodes, or do you prefer to leave it sealed off in order to play it safe? Leave your opinion in the comments below, and as always, if you like the episode, then I would be happy if you could leave a thumbs up. And also, if you want to support the channel, then you can either subscribe to stay up to date, or feel free to check out the Peak Complete Patreon. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.